Welcome back to A Closer Look. If you're just joining us today, my guest is Andy True, who's the Assistant Superintendent of Kingsport City Schools. Thank you again for being here. Thank you very much. So we just finished talking about Inside KCS. Mm -hmm. And that was really informative for me. I'm glad you told me all about that. Now let's talk about the schools in general. Mm -hmm. For instance, when I had Jeff Cassidy on recently, who's just been elected as mm -hmm. the sheriff, he was talking about how he wants to um, bring in more resource officers, mm -hmm. for instance. And I know safety in schools is a big concern now, especially when my kids have been traveling to Europe and they said, boy, everybody asks us over there, how is it with all the school shootings? Mm -hmm. They think of us as the country with school shootings and mm -hmm. you know danger and all that sort of things in schools. So I know that's a great concern on people's minds. You know, when you look at the, the list of priorities for us as a school system, education, health and wellness, safety is always going to rise to the top of that list. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we don't have a safe environment for our staff and our students to come in every day, everything else we want to accomplish can't happen. So that, that is a, a high priority for us and for, for several months we have been actively working with uh, a new group that we've developed, which is a, a safety task force, okay. to be able to partner with those key individuals in our community to help us make sure that what we're doing from an operation standpoint, from a procedure standpoint, and also from a facility standpoint, uh, are creating the environments that are safe uh, in the, you know, with best practices for our students and our staff. So partnering with folks like uh, the Kingsport Police Department and uh, our emergency response and mental health, mm -hmm. uh, facilities folks, uh, maintenance and custodial, that we can look at that broad scope of, mm -hmm. of what we're doing just to make sure that uh, you know, when something would happen, we're, we're proactive in our planning. Uh, and one of the things that that group has done is really look at a broad scope using kind of a FEMA structure mm -hmm. uh, that they recommend when you review to look at what we're doing. What are those key things that could happen or that do happen on a fairly regular basis? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, transportation, are we doing things in the safest possible way? You know, should we have an issue at a school, whether it's you know, everyone thinks of active shooter, but at the same time, there are many other kind of situations that might go on when it comes mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, a, a storm or fire drilling or, or those sorts of things. So looking at what we need to do and have structures in place before an event, during an event, and after an event, pre-planning those sorts of things. So if something does happen, we have a map of, of where we're going and, and how to operate. Uh, and having the right experts in the room to be able to do that. So that small working group has been working for many months and then in addition to that we kind of have a larger committee that looks at those recommendations uh, from different perspectives, whether it's parents or we have student on that larger committee, um, a media member to look at communications, all of those kinds of conversations that need to happen so that we, we can operate in the safest possible way and also mm -hmm. so our community understands that those are priorities for us and those mm -hmm. are the things we're looking at and, and you mentioned resource officers, adding in resource officers is something that's come out of that committee as well that we can uh, you know, make some operational changes to improve things but also then some physical changes. Uh, we were fortunate this year to receive some additional funding from the state when it comes to safety work. So we're taking that and, and we'll be doing some physical safety improvements to our schools as well in the coming months. Mm -hmm. uh, and so those those types of recommendations coming yes. out of that working safety task force have been critical for us. I was going to say because funding has got to be part of the large part of why right. we don't have as many resource officers as we probably like. Sure. That's a tough part. Yeah. So how can we take the, you know, we're fortunate in Kingsport to have, have great support from our community. Mm -hmm. uh, financially is one area that we have great support. So how can we be good stewards of those funds? How mm -hmm. can we prior prioritize them? Because they are limited and they are, uh, you know, we want to make sure we're good stewards of the, of the resources that were provided. Uh, so having that task force make those kind of recommendations, whether it's adding resource officers, doing things like adding mm -hmm. uh, secure front entrances you know we have we have kind of a, a secure entrance to uh, enter into the school where you have to get buzzed in but also mm -hmm. creating an extra layer at the very front door to where you have to get buzzed into the reception area and then get buzzed into the rest of the school so mm -hmm. that takes finances to be able to physically construct have mm -hmm. cameras systems to do that so those are the kind of recommendations that have come out of that safety task force and the improvements we'll be making in the next few months good yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. So tell me about the construction that's going on at DB. 
it has been, obviously, if you drive past Dobbins Bennett or you're dropping off a student to Dobbins Bennett or coming to an event at Dobbins Bennett, you have been walking through an active construction zone for the yes. last several months. Uh, last winter really started that work, and, and for many months, there was a lot going on you might not have seen because it was a lot of that initial foundational work, you know, taking mm -hmm. rock out where we're putting foundation footers and laying utilities. Mm -hmm. That has now shifted into that phase where you're starting to see things go vertical with the concrete pours and you can see where the floor structures are. Uh, you know, in the next few weeks, we'll shift and you'll be, instead of just seeing floors and ceilings, you'll start to see kind of the fill-in of the interior walls starting to go up and, mm -hmm. and, and really seeing uh, a lot more more, even though it's been active, a lot more activity as we start to work on things like utilities inside the building, mm -hmm. electrical, inside plumbing, all of that interior work. It will become a much uh, more active site mm -hmm. in the next few months. We're still on track to have that project complete uh, by the end of the school year. Wow. So that we'll be full on in mm -hmm. that facility, in that space uh, by next fall, uh, next the start of next school year. Um, and we're really excited to have the space. Obviously, it adds yes. about 70,000 square feet of space wow. to the facility. Okay, 70,000. Um, I think what even excites us more is what's going to happen in that space. So tell me uh, about that. Sure. It's, it's the Science and Technology Center. Uh, so the space itself will be centered on uh, what, can, you know, what kind of opportunities do we need to have for our, our students when it comes to that next level of science curriculum. So lab spaces that will provide mm -hmm. the, the environment for higher level lab work science and technology rooms to be able to have them come in and, and do that kind of that STEM work as they move forward. So uh, it's again, it adds that seat space to alleviate some um, some of the capacity issues that we've been dealing with at Dobbins Bennett for mm -hmm. the last several years. But again, it's what we're doing with that space. We could have just built a box and built classrooms, mm -hmm. but what we really wanted to do was to look strategically at how we wanted that space to look and what needed to happen within the space. So that has mm -hmm. been a real priority for us over the last several years, developing uh, the plans for the building. And now that we're getting close to having that building, relatively speaking, done in the next few months, we shift to, okay, how do we build a curriculum and the work that's going to happen in that space? And it's a really exciting process working with not only our administrators and our students and staff, but also just kind of the general, the broader community that has perspectives on, on the kind of mm -hmm. workforce that we want to develop and the kind of education that, that we as educators want to have uh, to prepare our students for what happens when they leave Dobbins Bennett. Will you be hiring more teachers, or is this just going to be expanding the classes you already have? It'll be expanding the space. There, there typically would not be any more additional staff added. Mm -hmm. We Right now, in a given year, we'll have anywhere between 15 and 20 teachers that don't actually have their own classroom. Oh, okay. Uh, so it will provide some space for those individuals uh, to, to be able to, to have uh, I space. I bet they can't wait. Exactly. <laughs> uh, but, but again, looking at that educational concept of, of how do we provide students for careers that they may not even exist yet, the, the careers may not exist yet. How do we prepare them for yeah. those? Uh, and also to meet a workforce demand that our local community and our world community needs. Our ever-changing world. Exactly. All this IT and science and it's good to keep up with the times and that's what you're doing. You know, to be able to have robotics experiences, mm -hmm. technology experiences, engineering experiences, and, and things that are going on in our community as well, that we can help build a workforce and build uh, skills in those individuals to where they can then, again, we've always said we're not trying to prepare students for graduation day, we're trying to prepare them for what happens after graduation day. So uh, being aware of those things and partnering with our communities in ways that, that provides for that. Streamworks. Yes. Like they do robotics, I had them on the show one time. Yes. And that's very exciting that they've taken that on to help with kids outside of school learn about robotics and engineering and that sort exactly. of thing. Exactly, the partnerships that we have with folks mm -hmm. like Streamworks for uh, the underwater robotics, the Lego leagues that are going on at the elementary and middle schools, those types of experiences uh, and having a facility itself that is focused on that and prioritizes that uh, and really provides a new face for Dobbins Bennett is exciting. What else is there going on that we might want to talk about? We have a few minutes left. Is there something in particular that we don't know about that you want to tell us? You know, we think about the school system just as a whole um, and the community partnerships. Mm -hmm. I think we always look at, um, we're fortunate, I think, um, 
we try not to lose sight on a day-to-day -day basis as a school system yes. um, of how fortunate we are in Kingsport mm -hmm. uh, to have a community that believes in us as a school system, but also is willing to partner with us. And you'll see in every school and every situation, um, there's partnerships beginning to, to, to not just form, but also flourish, and, and we're, we're very fortunate and, and, and grateful for those. I look at some of the work that's going on right now at the elementary schools when it comes to character development mm -hmm. and the way that our businesses and our, our faith-based communities are, are really partnering with our schools in order to provide a level of support beyond what we can specifically give them, you know, mm -hmm. the, the leader in me work that's going on at, at some of our individual schools when it comes to character development and leadership development. Those partnerships, um, again, I think forest for the trees kind of scenario, we live it every day, mm -hmm. but we don't want to take it for granted and we want to make sure our community understands how much we appreciate those partnerships of uh, again, whether it's a business or a church or, or individual parent groups that are willing to come and partner with us mm -hmm. in so many different ways uh, in our schools. And, in, in, you know, you've got some visible ones where you have things like band boosters and, 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 you know, athletic clubs and boosters that do that. But also those things are happening in our schools in other ways all the time. Uh, and it's really exciting to see those continue to flourish. Very good. Very well done. Let's just put out one more time. For people that might want to apply for Insight, KCS, this is an excellent opportunity. The applications are due by Monday, October 1st. So if you're interested in learning more about Kingsport City Schools and taking part in this program, just get on to k12k.com or call Andy here at 423-378-2130 to apply for this fantastic program. We're looking forward to another great year. We appreciate the opportunity to, to share that information with you and, and your viewers. And uh, it's, it's a program I typically uh, mm -hmm. help lead, uh, but there's a lot of folks that have involvement in it across the district, and we're just excited about another year this year. I really appreciate you being here today and educating us all on what's going on with Kingsport City Thank Schools. Thank you, it's a pleasure Thank to be you, here. Thank you, Andy, mm -hmm. it was great meeting you. And we will be back next week with another thrilling show. I hope you're here to join me. See you then. <laughs>